Hey, Dustin Tibbetts here, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth Managers. And I was talking with my daughter the other day, and uh, she's getting more interested in money. She's got a lot of savings. She didn't really spend any money. And uh, she was just trying to figure out different things to do with it. And it occurred to me that I never shared kind of a fun little model uh, with you guys here. So we're going to play a game and share some data. There, of course, this is not saying there's a right way to do it, wrong way to do it. I just want to show you the numbers. Because a lot of times we think, uh, pay off debt, should I save some money, what should I do? And we might use a calculator, some sort of online tool or whatever. It does it for us, but we never really see what's going on in the background. So I tried to simplify this. I might mess it up, but let's give it a shot here. We're going to use an example. Let's say that you need to buy a car and you have $20,000 in cash, not emergency savings, nothing, just $20,000 in extra cash. And you're thinking, well, I don't like debt, so I'll just go pay $20,000 for a car. Maybe you're someone that says, I've got $20,000 in cash. I don't mind having debt, but should I go take the debt or should I just pay with the cash that I have? What's better overall? So we're going to compare the two. There's a really interesting actual model that I remember. This went all the way back to when I think I was in high school. I think we ran through this model or something. Um, there's a million ways to look at it, but let's just dive into it and take a look. Okay, don't let it scare you. Here's what we got. We're going to assume that the rate is the same. I know rates are not what I'm going to illustrate. I'm just, this is an example. Let's say that the rate you can get on each transaction is 4%, meaning you buy a car and the interest rate is 4% to take the loan for five years. Or you do a five year savings or investment or something and you generate 4% off of that. What's the outcome here? Now, my clients know that you don't get a five-year car loan. You actually get a four-year car loan. We break it all down in a budgeting class that we do. But let's take a look. You can already kind of see here. Uh, off to the left, you've got the loan cost would be $22,100. You can go run these numbers yourself if you like. But a 4% loan over five years is going to be $22,100. If you were to just save the money or somehow earn 4% off of it, then you would end up with $24,333. Wait, wait, wait a minute. That's a little different. So after five years, if I saved the cash, I'd actually end up with more than having the uh, car loan. So you could argue maybe I'll just save the cash. I'll pay for the car out of the car loan. It will cost me less. Otherwise, if I take the money out of savings and I buy the car, sure, I paid $20,000 for it, but that money could have grown to more than it would have cost me to borrow the money in the first place. In fact, the higher the interest rate goes, and this will some point in the distant future be more relevant because rates will go up, but the higher the loan goes, the more beneficial it is to just borrow the money than it is to uh, if you can save it at the same rate. That's the key, really. Can you save it at the same rate? And I know we're oversimplifying. It. What's the chances of that happening at 10%, right? So you get what I'm saying. But you can see the difference there. Saving the money or taking the loan, there is kind of a difference there. What I did is I took it a step further and said, we realize right now there's a spread, right? Uh, we can borrow at one rate, but our savings really doesn't get a whole lot of money. So let's take it a step further. And again, I'm not saying you can get these rates or this is happening. I'm just giving an example. Let's say there's a spread of 2%. And to be honest, if it's just under 2%, but to make it simple, if the spread between what money costs you for a car loan or a fixed loan versus what you could earn on savings or investments is 2% or greater, then it's really weird, but you actually are better off saving the money and just paying the money for the loan. So in this case, we're saying the car loan is 4%, but we can't get 4% on savings. We can only get 2%. In that case, what should we do? Well, they basically come out to be the same number there. You got $22,000 and almost $100 versus $22,100. In other words, Six and a half, a dozen of the other. Doesn't really matter whether you want to buy a car using a loan at 4% or you want to just save the money at, uh, or pay cash for the car. You're not really missing out on anything. In either case, the growth of the money is the same as the cost of the money. Now, if the car loan costs you 5% and there's at least a 2% spread, meaning you can save or invest and somehow net 3%, there's all of a sudden a difference. I plotted it here for you. You could also look off to the left. 22,645 versus 23,185. Not a huge difference, but net, net, you end up with more dollars, all other things outside of the equation, like taxes or whatever. You end up with a little bit more money by saving it versus paying off a five-year car loan. And in fact, the wide, or sorry, the larger the interest rate gets, as long as you keep the spread at 2%, it becomes exponential, meaning it becomes more and more beneficial to just take the loan 
and have the cash growing at whatever the rate is that's 2% less than the loan. So it's kind of interesting. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I thought about this a number of different ways to say, like, what's the lesson here? Because you can't say, I can't say, go get the loan. I guess the lesson is, if you're okay with having debt, you now can justify that you're going to really end up with more money than the cost of the debt. Um, I don't know, right? It's just a fun math model because when people come to me and they say, um, I have a 6% car loan and I just want to pay it off. I'm like, okay, wait, wait. <laughs> Is it that you can't sleep at night and that's why you want to pay the car loan off? Are you worried about your job and maybe making the payments? When we can answer all the general questions, then we go, wait a minute now, you've got this money, what is it earning? And if they say, well, it's earning 0.1%, there's, there's no way to make that work. But if they say, hey, I'm in some REITs or whatever I'm doing and I'm making 5% on it, it's pretty consistent, I'm happy with that. Now we've got something to work with and say, how do you end up with more dollars, balance sheet wise, right? I get it, the loan is costing you, but how do you end up with more dollars at the end of the day? And sometimes it's a fun little model to run. So uh, I don't know, I just thought I'd throw that out there. I, I don't really have like a great lesson to take away other than it's kind of a fun math equation. You could ask somebody, if you have 2% uh, money you're earning at 2% and a car loan at 4%, all things being equal, should you just pay the car loan off? and see what people say. You would think that you say, interest rate's higher than what I'm earning. Let me go ahead and just pay it off. Not always the case, and now you know. Hey, have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, what do you think, right? It's a, a bit of a weird thing there, but uh, let me know what you think. Uh, again, it's not perfect, just a fun uh, game with math. Enjoy.